Hello and welcome to CS230. This is lecture 16 and lesson 2. And in this lesson I'm going to review some of the notes on MongoDB that we looked at in lecture 16. We didn't get to complete it. We talked about NoSQL and the NoSQL database world. We talked about the different kinds of NoSQL databases and in particular we were interested in looking at the document-oriented databases like MongoDB. And we we discovered, I mean, how they work, um, and you know, you basically have lots of documents, and we can connect those documents, and we can embed documents in, in other documents. Okay, we saw and talked about the fact that we didn't really have this notion of primary keys, but every element that was inserted into a document, you know, was indexed uniquely. Um, we talked a little bit about data modeling in NoSQL as well, and we examined what's called the normalized data model and we examined the embedded data model. And we talked a little bit about, you know, when it's a good idea to use a normalized data model and when it's a good idea to use an embedded data model, okay? Sometimes when you read um, some articles online, they say, oh, you know, you shouldn't be using, you know, a, a normalized model because it's inefficient. And, you, and others, you should always use an embedded model. But actually, there are instances when it's appropriate to use um, embedded data models, and it's also appropriate, appropriate to use the normalized data models. In some cases, you might want to design and model where you're going to use both. both. So we, were, we, we got to the point where we were talking about approaching the document design and data modeling with MongoDB. Now, one of the things we really needed to think about is, you know, how do we deal with um, the different kinds of relationships um, between the entities? So, you know, your documents are instances of some entity. And you may have entities containing other entities or documents containing other documents. Okay, so that when we... When we were previously looking at relational database management systems, we saw that we could build this conceptual, logical, and physical models of the systems. Um, and these were really just entities and relationships, and those relationships had cardinality. So while we're moving to this NoSQL world, okay, and we're working with entities rather than tables, and those entities are documents, that doesn't mean that we abandon any of the modeling theory that we would have had previously. We still have relationships. Um, so it is possible to actually have um, the kinds of relationships we've seen before. So we can have one-to-one -one relationships, we can have one-to-many relationships, we can have many-to-many -many relationships. So let's review what those are and see how we might ultimately model them using documents rather than having a series of tables like we did in a relational database. So a one-to-one -one relationship, that exists when one object of an entity is related to one and only one object of another entity. So for example, a user could have one and only one birth date. So if we have a document that stores user information and another document that stores dates, there would be a one-to-one -one relationship between them. Now it could be embedded, you know, of course as well. So we might have a one-to-many relationship or one in. And a one-to-many relationship that exists when one object of an entity can be related to many objects of another entity. So, for example, it could be a one-to-n or one-to-many relationship between a user and their contact phone number. So, in other words, a user could have more than one phone number. We also might have and, you know, be interested in many-to-many -many relationships. So, they exist when an instance of one entity is related to many instances or objects of another entity and vice versa. So, for example, in the case of users and items purchased by that user in some online online um, shopping environment, one user can purchase more than one item, as well as one item can be purchased by more than one user. So, um, so something that we like to, to look at is that the MongoDB documents are described, described, well, it's BSON, not JSON, it's a form of JSON, but, you know, from your perspective, we can think of it um, of bringing forward all the, all the material that we used and had seen earlier um, in JSON, that will work for you as well. Okay, so if you know how to work with JSON, you already know how to work with um, the NoSQL MongoDB document database content, even though it's BSON rather than JSON. Okay, so now let's have a look at modeling these relationships. So the first one we're interested in is the one-to-one. -one. So let's say we want to store the address of for a customer in our database. And we're going to use that customer addresses um, model that we looked at previously when we were looking at relational database modeling. So it's the same, it's the same data. Okay, so let's assume that there's a single address for each customer. So in that case, we can actually design an embedded document having the following structure. So here's a document that's created first. This is one that's just been dumped out already. You know, I haven't shown you the commands to, to create it here, but um, we've seen those previously. But, you know, this is the, this is the 
object, the document. So here's a document that has its own object ID and um, uh, the name, first name, last name, email, mobile, date of birth. And instead of having a separate document containing the address, and this address is the same structure as we've seen when we were working with the relational ones, we embed this as just another field in the actual document itself. Okay, so the address entity is embedded in the customer. You know, that's an example of denormalization process um, or embedded process. And it's very useful when there's a contains or holds or has relationship between the two entities. Like, uh, you know, Alicia Casey has an address. So here one document could be stored within the other document, thereby placing all the related content within a single document. So because all the document is available in one document, the approach ensures enhanced read performance. Because every time you make a query operation within the document, it's less expensive for the server if you're having to make multiple calls and checks and reads over two documents. Okay? So we'll see some examples of how this kind of thing a little bit later when we look at Node.js and PHP. We could have adopted a normalized approach, so there was no embedding here. That means we, we, we would end up creating two or more documents in separate collections. One to store the customer information and one to store the address information. That second document will contain a customer ID field to indicate which of the, which, to which customer or user the address belongs. So, and, that, you know, and remember, the customer would be the unique underscore ID field of the document and it would be referenced. Okay, so not surprisingly, we have two separate documents here, one for Alicia Casey as a as a user and one for an address here. And we can see Alicia's um, key, if you like, or ID is here. And we're using that here as the customer ID here to reference her. And this is her address. Okay, that requires two separate queries to the database in order to be able to do that. The first query would fetch the ID of the customer and that will be used then by the second query to retrieve the customer's address information. Okay, the embedding approach that we saw, first of all, that makes much more sense than the referencing approach, you know, because we're if we're frequently using the customer name and address simultaneously, so that's something useful, okay? So your approach, though, would ultimately depend on your logical data model and which data you need to retrieve from the database. Now let's have a quick look at modeling one-to-many relationships. Um, so embedded documents continue to grow in size over the life of the application and may adversely impact on the database write performance. So um, there's a limit of 60 megabytes on the maximum size of each document. So a normalized approach would be preferred if the embedded documents would become too large. In other words, when the embedding approach results in copious amounts of duplicate data, or if you need to model complex or hierarchical relationships between documents. So if you look at an example of a customer with orders, okay, and that records all orders made by a customer, and say we want to associate the customer's name and address with every order, then the denormalized embedded approach would store the customer and address information in an order document. However, the approach stores redundant information in each order document, okay? So what would happen, for example, if we needed to update a customer's name or the address required changing? So it would be possible to, you know, it would require an update to the appropriate field in all of the corresponding order documents. So the best solution would be to normalize the information and to connect via references. So, you know, when you read these articles that tells you, you know, you must not use references, you must not use a normalized model, or must not, or you must use the normalized model, or whatever, you know, be very careful and be very considerate of your actual logical model and how you want to actually implement something in practice. Okay, so the other example would be the many-to-many -many relationships and modeling those. So let's look at an example for custom storing customers and the orders that contain items they purchased. Um, ideally, with the customers in a customer's collection and the orders in an orders collection. And let's say we want to design using reference documents to illustrate the many-to-many -many relationship between the customers and the orders. We could have something like this. So here are our customers, and we see the customers. Here are the items that they purchased, and we have a reference to those items. And then we have an object, you know, the items they purchased. So this essentially is another, another order, really. Okay, for this customer. So here's customer two, customer one, item one and two, item two and three. And we could have a collections order that actually just looks at it from it was purchased by this customer one, this item was purchased by customer one, this item was custom was purchased by customer one and customer two, and so forth. Okay, it's a bit contrived, okay, but it does demonstrate the M and M relationships are very useful in some cases if you need you to have that 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 interferencing going on. You should keep in mind that like you know the relationships can be handled using one-to-many relationships along with some intelligent queries and that ultimately reduces the amount of data that needs to be maintained in both documents. So you know I can't see me doing too many 
of these many-to-many -many relationships when I can figure out on how to reference them using one-to-many relationships. So um, it all depends on you and your design and what you want to be able to do. Okay. Okay, so we had a quick look of the um, a quick review of the NoSQL databases, MongoDB. And what was more important is that we looked at some document modeling with MongoDB and you know how we could use um, normalized or denormalized referencing um, or embedded uh, approaches when necessary and where necessary. Thank you very much for watching.